This is the Krillcast. I'm Chris. I'm Elijah. And I'm Luke. And they are back for this Friday episode. Um, this is after the Shadow of the Classes episode with Billy, so um, <laughs> if you guys are surprised to see them back, it's uh, it's been a Monday, Wednesday, Friday segment with Rocket Sloth guys. So before we get into this segment, why don't you guys tell everybody about your channel? And you're not John uh, Tron. <laughs> no, we are not John Tron, um, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but uh, we... Uh, we make uh, Halo content. Uh, we try to focus on telling our interesting stories through either our own experiences or other experiences through the community in a fun and upbeat way. And uh, we have a lot of fun just kind of throwing some content out there. Absolutely. And you guys can get to their channel by going to youtube.com slash R-O-C-K-E-T-S-L-O-T-H. That's Rocket Sloth. So uh, hey. today is Friendly Friday. So we're all going to be friends. That includes uh, Luke and Elijah, too. Not just me. You know, we're all going to be friendly here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but it is called Friendly Friday because we're not doing a face-off. And I think this is like the third week in a row where we're not doing a face-off. We're just going to kind of <laughs> discuss whether Microsoft should be thinking about or actually doing, purchasing, or making an acquisition of Electronic Arts. That's EA, one of the... Uh, one of the companies is constantly in the news for good and bad reasons, um, and also one of the biggest third-party party publishers in the gaming arena. Um, so before we kind of discuss this, what are what would you guys think of that? Do you think EA would be a good acquisition for Microsoft? Um, Luke, do you want to go first on that? Yes. I mean, obviously, they're a big company. They make a ton of money, um, but I think they'll be really expensive and i think there's other like publishers that xbox could buy or microsoft could buy where in the long run they would have a more diverse audience and not just the ea audience right i think um so uh, this is an idea that i guess i i've never really paid too much attention to i always thought maybe it was a little bit out there i wouldn't i mean I definitely think Microsoft should be making purchases of more uh, properties and more intellectual properties that they can put and make games for, especially ones that have had series that are really dormant for a long time. But with EA, it's kind of weird. I, I what I, I'd like to know more information. Maybe I'm more on the fence about it. Maybe I could be swayed either way after this discussion. So I think the most interesting part of EA is EA Sports, right? It's like EA mm. Sports is like a money-making powerhouse as part of Electronic Arts. But a lot of the other franchises, they even stuff they've experimented in, like Anthem, um, has been commercially successful, but a flop in regards to how their stock reacted to the Anthem, you know, the release of Anthem. But also right. games like Mass Effect, like we had one, two, and three were really good, uh, really good sales, performed really well, reviewed really well. And then Andromeda, which did not perform, at least in a sales perspective and like a, from a publicity standpoint, also performed very poorly, kind of sent Mass Effect into dormancy. Um, and the fact that they've been doing Star Wars for near on five to ten years now, right? I'm not, I am not—I can't remember when they actually right. got the license for Star Wars. Uh, I want to say it was like 2013 or something they got the license. Yeah, 2015 was the first release. Yeah. yeah. And they, they've shuttered things like Star Wars 1313 and other things. They're just... EA is so beholden to stockholders and with EA Sports driving the bulk of their revenue, I think if you could piece part EA Sports off into its own company and just grab all those franchises, Microsoft could really build up the amount of like first party franchises they're producing with an acquisition of all of EA except for EA Sports. EA Sports is kind of a weird one because it is something that's a multi-platform and it would kind of stink to have all of the sporting franchises in the U.S., and other various countries like FIFA, um, the, not country of FIFA because FIFA is not a country, but like the player base is other countries uh, aside right. from the U.S. I would say FIFA is more popular in like Europe and uh, Australia and those other countries, um, countries and continents, right? Australia. <laughs> but um, right. I think EA Sports would not make sense for Microsoft to pick up, but the rest of EA would make sense. But that acquisition probably closer to 30 billion dollars would be my guess um i would have guessed like 20 25 billion and i think they just bought bethesda for 7.5 billion and bethesda is one of the biggest publishers so i'm wondering um they could buy so many other publishers 
for the 20, 25 million or even 30 million they would spend on EA, like, I'm sure they could pick up, like, what, Konami, um, Take Two, uh, what else is there? Square Enix, Bandai Namco, probably Sega. for all the same Sega, for all, like, less than what they would pay for EA. And I think in the long run, having that many more franchises and that many more diversity in games would actually uh, be more beneficial than just having EA and EA Sports, you know? Because I assume you have to buy the whole package, you know? You, you just... also have to wonder, uh, and this is the one thing I'd be the most curious about, if an acquisition like this was going to go through, what does that do for the brands that EA is licensing currently? Do they automatically get renewed into a deal with Microsoft? Or is this something that Microsoft would then have to go negotiate uh, contracts with or license transfers for the properties that are like, uh, you know, like like Star Wars with Disney or the NFL? Um, I, I wonder how that works because EA doesn't own the rights to Disney's properties like Star Wars and EA doesn't own the NFL. So it'd be interesting to see like how much would this bill actually run up to excluding just buying EA? Like what would the cost to Microsoft be to fully incorporate this and then start developing games afterwards? Yeah. Cause the, the question would be, what would the ne- renegotiation be with star Wars? What would the renegotiation be with NFL? And that's what I'm saying. I think EA sports would be something I would almost say, Hey EA, before we acquire you, please spin off your sports into its own thing. Cause that would probably make money on its own hand over fist. Like it already does. And you wouldn't necessarily need the sports franchises. Because you, can you imagine if Microsoft said, okay, all these EA sports games, they're now going to be first-party Microsoft only. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can you imagine? Like, everybody would be flipping out. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. I, I, think, I think at that point, though, it would make more sense for Microsoft just to do licensing agreements with EA to get the properties that they want to use or purchase the rights to the properties outright and just purchase them from EA than try to acquire the stuff that they if there's stuff like if they don't have an interest in EA Sports, I don't think buying EA makes sense. I would say EA Sports is the the biggest money maker. That would be the one thing of value that you would probably want more than anything else. Yeah, you're saying like who cares about the franchises necessarily as far as money goes? Get the thing that's making right. money for EA. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a question as to whether or not the Star Wars license would go with an acquisition of EA. I would imagine there would be the opportunity to have that, but who knows what Microsoft would actually do um, in regards to renegotiating with Disney. I mean, you're talking two of the biggest uh, powerhouse businesses in the U.S. trying to strike a deal right. at that point. Yeah, and I think might... the Star Wars license is almost up, isn't it? I mean, they might it renew it, but, I, but it was like a 10-year deal or something like that. Yeah. I, I think there are, there's, there's, from my understanding, I think what Luke was saying even, I think there's better companies out there that Microsoft would benefit more from for less money. Because, of course, they also get the good PR of people just knowing that, like, Bethesda games are going to be made, you know what I mean, or are going to be under the Microsoft's roof. You know, some of the games are going to be still uh, released on all platforms, but the vagueness of the future afterwards sounds like they might consider uh, keeping things off of the PlayStation 5 specifically and just do PC and Xbox. Uh, Or maybe Switch maybe the switch uh to try to leverage maybe playstation one day putting x cloud on it or something like that now i i have heard some rumors that microsoft might do timed exclusivity for some of the games especially like um, elder scrolls games or because they're putting it out on game pass like that's a huge advantage to microsoft subscribers uh, microsoft game pass subscribers where with the playstation they would only offer a 70 dollars digital download So the price would be controlled on the PlayStation market. That's one of the things I've heard Microsoft might be doing with Bethesda. Um, That leads me to my next thing is what studio would you rather see them get? Like, do you think CD Projekt Red would be something would be far more valuable than like an EA? Or are you thinking more or bigger than like a CD Projekt Red? I mean, I think EA is like way big. So if they actually want to spend like 20, 30 billion... They could probably pick up four, five, six bigger studios. So, I mean, they could probably pick up CD Projekt Red and, like, you know, multiple other ones. Because I assume, I think Bethesda was already one of the higher ones, you know. So I assume 
CD Projekt Red will be like two billion maybe, and maybe Konami like six billion, depending on Square Enix maybe one point five billion. You know, so I feel like that could add up to twenty billion, and they would have so much more uh, variety of games. You know, right? I think. Uh... I mean, I really loved hearing the rumors, and I, I don't know if this would be realistic, of a, a Sega acquisition from Microsoft. Oh, yeah. That comes up every a, year. <laughs> I just love falling down those rabbit holes of how it's a consideration, just because I'd, I'd, I think, I mean, okay, so from a from money-making standpoint, the argument is that they would brand the Xbox in Japan as, like, the Sega Xbox Series, Series X, yeah. because... It has Sega has brand recognition in Japan where the Xbox like does not at all. Like no one buys an Xbox out there. Um, they did sell out of Xbox Series X pre orders, but we don't know what the total number was. Yeah, I mean they, they might like, have one pre order. <laughs> yeah. They might have just had one pre order. Yeah. One hundred percent the pre order. So I think that's really interesting as a possibility and I don't think it'd be out of the realm of possibilities. Um, but there's also been the bungee rumor occasionally floating around. Uh, but Bungie apparently had too high of a price, what they're asking for. I I don't know how good of a deal that would be or what that, how that would affect the future of uh, Destiny. But um, I really like the partnership they've done recently where um, on Game Pass, all of the DLCs for Destiny are now included. It's You can just jump in and play Destiny 2, everything that's on there. And I think it'd be really nice to be able to have the new expansions coming out and not have to drop $30 every year and just have it in your Game Pass subscription. And having, uh, I think Bungie is really deserving of a more, expa- or, or not Bungie, Destiny is really deserving of uh, expanding the lore of the universe out. And I think on the podcast, when we were talking about uh, like Halo and how it has a really expansive universe, I think it'd be really nice to see more of that spread out in uh, Destiny and Microsoft has you know done that with halo with bungie in the past it'd be cool to see that happen with destiny uh but i don't think bungie should touch halo if we're gonna go down that rabbit road later <laughs> or rabbit hole later um but yeah i think bungie's another good candidate more so than ea yeah and i mean probably bungie's what like two three billion and i guess it was too expensive for one franchise and that's why they went with bethesda and they paid more for bethesda but they got more for it too. I guess I didn't want to pay like two billion for just the Destiny franchise, which I guess Ubisoft you know, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I feel if like they Ubisoft... wanted another like Bethesda sized one, wouldn't Ubisoft be up there? Yeah, I, I almost feel like Ubisoft is a little bigger. Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe they're close to Bethesda. Yeah, hmm. I feel like that would be another. I guess Bethesda had a lot of like sub. Uh, like subcategories within it, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, I guess they have like the Wolfenstein team with and like in software and stuff like that. But like Ubisoft would be another one if yeah, they're looking for a like, big acquisition. True, but maybe Ubisoft's actually way smaller than uh, Bethesda now because they did close a lot of their studios and stuff in the last couple of years. Oh really? So I don't know um, if their price also dropped. Take Two would be another one. They could probably buy Capcom. They could probably buy for way less than. Uh, I feel like Take Two would be only one of the most expensive ones. Really, they're I feel considered like too... they're considered smaller than like Capcom, and actually really? they're considered yeah. smaller than Telltale. But this is 2014, just... so we're six years ago on this list. I mean, I'm just trying to think like because the GTA's how much money does GTA prints with its uh, <laughs> microtransactions? Yeah, yeah, I mean, but I mean, I don't know. I feel like I don't know, like maybe four or five billion. I don't know. I feel like it's not that high. Yeah. What else do they have besides GTA though? Like Borderlands, mm. which isn't that big of a money maker. Aren't they um, Red Dead Redemption too? Oh, they do have Red That's Dead Redemption. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I feel like they still don't have as much as Bethesda. Civilization, yeah, you're right. Let's just, oh, uh, that... you know, so I, what I didn't realize though is that Apple is technically a larger publisher of video games. I mean, video, yeah, on your phone. Than Microsoft? Makes sense, yeah. But I don't know how many games they actually publish themselves. Well, wouldn't well, like everything on I the guess iPhone everything be on the App Store? Yeah. I guess if you literally included everything on the App Store, that would that would make sense. That would make sense, I guess, if they're technically the I publisher wonder now of after, everything. Uh, after the Fortnite review, the revenue is out. I wonder if they're still bigger than uh, <laughs> Microsoft. 
The thing is, I don't think Microsoft, like, I think Microsoft is trying to get more developers under their belt and more franchises, but I don't know, like, how heavily <laughs> Microsoft will be about exclusivity. Like, as yeah. far as, uh, like, I mean, I I still think there's gonna there's obviously, it makes sense for them to make things exclusive, but I think also just knowing that all of these games are coming to, like, Game Pass and you're not going to have to pay an extra $60 up front to play a game, uh, I think that might start to sway people the more and more things start getting announced into getting an Xbox to sign up for it just to have access to everything. I would be curious. Game Pass is nice. Oh. I'd be curious how much money Microsoft had surrendered to get EA uh, EA access on the Game Pass. I would be curious. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that would be. I wonder interesting if it's like number. a commission, um, like a yeah, maybe percent or something like that. Uh, but going back to um, capturing maybe more of the Japanese market, they could always go for a company like Sega, Square Enix, Bandai Namco, Konami. And buy those franchises, and then, you know, if someone buys Konami and puts out a good Metal Gear game again, um, you know, I think people will go for that, and especially in Japan and in the rest of the world. So I think that should be their next move instead of trying to get EA, which is more of a Western audience, anyways. Um, so yeah, and I mean they probably wouldn't have to spend as much money on any of these Japanese companies as EA. I also would like to see Microsoft, just on a side note, I'd like to see them put some money in opening up some studios on their own. Yeah. Um, like, just more uh, studios, uh, like first party studios. Like, um, for instance, when they started 343 to take over for Halo, which they did way in advance, uh, did, whatever your opinion on Halo, I mean, across the board with what 343 put out, um, there's a lot of really good talent that was hired at 343. And I think they should treat some of their other properties that they're just sitting on, uh, like the properties that they have with Rare and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They should like assign that to these other studios that they have or build a studio to take on some of those franchises. I mean, a Banjo-Kazooie game released on the Switch and Xbox, it would sell crazily. Um, Especially with crossplay. Right. And uh, and, and I think that would be, be interesting to see, like... Uh, what could be done with some of those other franchises that they're sitting on. And they did it with Battletoads recently. Yeah. They took a rare game, which is a rare intellectual property, but they gave it to a different studio and they released a game and that was cool, but I'd like to see it maybe on a larger scale. Yeah. I think a Banjo-Kazooie game with some kind of multiplayer would be amazing, especially if you added in like Donkey Kong 64 style multiplayer. Right. I do have to say though, Microsoft isn't sitting in that many franchises. They are not doing games for anymore. Um, like we, we just got a new fable announced, right? I guess, um, but like, you know what I mean? And I, what I'm like, else there's are they so sitting many on? games. Sitting, well, what are they sitting on? Like connect, connect perfect dark, perfect Killer dark, Instinct. perfect dark, perfect Banjo dark. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I mean, it's these old rare friends. That's like all it is. It's just old rare franchises. And then like random what stuff like links, dude, when we're getting any connect links fun labs. Look, I got one that can trump all of that. Um, What's that? conquer's bad for a day. Yeah. Can you imagine the if they said, all right, we're re- Spark. Yeah. And then they're like, you just have to make your own Conquer game. That's all. And then they canceled that. <laughs> that was that pretty was a, cool. That was a yeah, but I mean, so essentially, they need, just need to, like, revive old Rare franchises, and then we're good. Like, <laughs> but yeah. they don't have that many other things other than Rare properties. And, like, obviously the stuff they're already putting games out, like Gears and Halo. But maybe they need to acquire more interesting stuff first before they can open up new studios. Well, I mean, it took a long sense. time for them to finally uh, do Fable, though. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they've been while. sitting on Fable, but that was a big one. They've been sitting on a, a lot of people wanted. And then, I mean, what else do they really have crackdown? that's not rare? Like, they need a good Crackdown game mm. still. They I have, mean, like, no Japanese recently. RPGs. Let's just face it. That's the reason they brought back, um, what is that, uh, Fantasy Star 2, right? That was the reason they did that. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. for a while, there was a lot of RPG uh, games on the Xbox 360 yeah, like um, um, I think they're still sitting on Lost Odyssey. Yeah, I think got that that's one. a Microsoft property. I guess they could revive that, for example. But uh, I feel like they don't have like a big banger that they're still sitting on anymore. Um, huh? Halo. We haven't had a game in five years. No, Where but I mean, like something that really hasn't seen like something like that's really dead. Like 
all the rare franchises, those would obviously be bangers, right? But right. outside of that, um, they don't. They're not sitting on anything. Um, well, they killed off Scalebound. They killed off a Fable game that looked promising. Like Viva Pinata is not a rare game, isn't it? It is. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But I'm just saying, so, like, like, where is it? I mean, I mean, Viva Pinata too. I, I guess Rare has to recover from making uh, Kinect Fitness or whatever they did for the last ten years. I mean, they're giving uh, Rare's at least publishing. There's some. There's no, I mean, some Rare. Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is a great Thieves, game. Yeah. And I'm glad Rare got to make a good game again. That's actually <laughs> yeah. fun to play, and not yeah. just you hopping in front of a camera. Like, yeah, and at the very least, like, even if you didn't like Sea of Thieves, like. There's no denying the game was successful. Like people still play that game regularly yeah. now, uh, which is cool. I don't. Know, I think. I think Microsoft needs to almost step it up into gear. I feel like more recently now they're doing it, but there's a period of time where a few years ago you're just like, what? What are they like? What's coming? Well, there's nothing coming out, or uh, they're not announcing anything, and it's. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I come from the time where there was a new Halo game released like a, every year or two years at least. Right, we're you know right around the Halo Three era. We had Halo Three, Halo Wars, Halo ODST, uh, Reach, and it was like, and then Halo Anniversary right after that. It was just there was something, and now it's it's. I mean, I miss that too. I think they should buy the developers of Ukulele and then produce a new Banjo Kazooie game. Boom, instant success. Yeah, I guess that would be. It's I didn't like Ukulele. Yeah, but you don't have to like Ukulele. The guys that made Ukulele are previous Banjo Kazooie developers, and they felt a little bit stuck on the fact that they had previously made Banjo Kazooie, and they didn't right. want to make Banjo Kazooie two, <laughs> or Banjo two, Banjo three, really. Um, right, but I'm like, the the I didn't like Ukulele, and I feel like if they tried to make a banjo game, it wouldn't be a good banjo game. Like it was like ukulele well, with ban like a banjo skin on it. As long as it's not nuts I, and like... bolts, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, a hat in time. Yeah, game. I had them, they should buy the ha hat in time developer. Yeah, I mean, they did. I I think that's a better collectathon than ukulele. I really liked a hat in time. There was. Yeah. I played a little bit too. It's it's really uh really good and i guess um microsoft has done a lot of like indie franchises that they have come up or indie i mean obviously not indie franchise because it's microsoft but like indie <laughs> type franchises like orient cuphead. the blind forest cuphead and stuff that they've like kind of come up with and they fill that indie niche and indie games are becoming more and more popular because so many people are burned by the big franchises that they go for the little games you know over the last uh, five years um, cause there has not been a single big franchise that haven't, hasn't had some like really big negative PR or like a really bad game that people, you know, felt fed up with or a really bad run of games. Right. I don't know. Was um, Ukulele the Impossible Lair any good? I never played it. I didn't play it either. It's like a Donkey Kong Country ukulele game, but I didn't realize that's what it was until way later. So mm. I was like, if I would have known... Like that's what that game was, and it wasn't just a like spin-off mini game. Oh. I would have tried it. Yeah, I might have. Tried I think it. a lot of people didn't even know that that's what it was. Like, <laughs> I, I didn't even know this was a thing. Yeah, yeah, like I, did, I didn't know what this was. <laughs> like, the, like their old Donkey Kong Country games. Uh, and I was wondering if Ukulele played better in that form, but uh, hmm. I don't it know. looks, I'd it like looks to really see, good. See more uh, universes built. I just like to see. I, I want more universes just to be built in gaming. I think in they could, and they had like Scalebound looked like it was set up to do that, and then I don't know why they canceled it. You know, right? Uh, I never fully understood. <laughs> it sounds like the engine and the game itself did not run well on the Xbox One hardware. Okay, maybe that's the reason the last five years have been so weird for Microsoft because the Xbox One was kind of bad comparatively. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, they messed up when they tried to make it like this all-in-one media home console. Like, right. if I wanted to play on a uh, TV box, you know, or if I wanted to play video games, I wouldn't buy a TV box, right. basically. Um, so I, may, I guess the Xbox One did stall Microsoft's success for a little while. Uh, Sorry, I've got, I've got a fly fighting me here. That's why I've been like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> dang. <laughs> I think I beat it finally. But I mean, hopefully with the Series X... Um, you know, there will be more momentum um, mm -hmm. to do like 
maybe we'll even see a scale bound. I think that's a franchise they sit on, and they could probably... It's like a new universe, and they could probably build something on that. Do you think they're doing an Activision, or what I always uh, accuse Activision for doing, even though I don't know if they actually do it, but uh, where they just have finished games, and they're just sitting on them, waiting for when they want to release I don't know. If, they have I mean, Scalebound finished, yeah. but it's for next gen, and they're just like, waiting. Next, so I mean, maybe. maybe. They would have I, mean, it by now. I don't know, but Activision <laughs> does that, like, extensively. They're like, I mean, actually, you know maybe you're right, sure. because I feel like that's what, I mean, this is just, you know, my theory, but maybe they're sitting on the Halo 3 remastered at 343. Um, oh, you know, in all case, the blur cuts are in case infinite, the yeah, in case infinite, uh, you know, maybe needs a little bit of extra time or, you know, get some no, negative. What we have gotten that announced? Oh, when after it releases, yeah. after it releases, after it releases, you know. Yeah, maybe. I don't think there's any chance that Halo Three Anniversary sees the light of day if Infinite's successful, at least yeah. not for another two, three years. Yeah. So, I mean, that's maybe you know maybe they they have plans for it already, but Activision actually sitting on like Call of Duty Remastered, like. That's to fill in yeah. gaps like, when, they, when they do something bad or I don't know like or just <laughs> like sticking I'm modern sure warfare like, it's just, it wasn't it weird that like when everyone was at home earlier this year like we, we, we knew okay we knew Luke and I had already theorized there was a battle royale in modern warfare back when the game came out we were looking there's a section in the game a spec op section that took place in this huge area that you parachute into and we're like oh this is where the battle royale is going to take place. Like it was very obvious, right? <laughs> uh, but it wasn't in the game, and and, and it, they had it finished. I'm pretty sure it was done, and they knew that if they waited to release it in, you know, later months of the game, it would rejuvenate the game's life. So they drop it right in the middle of like March of this year, and it's hugely successful, making more money than anything they've ever uh, done in recent years. And then like just a month later oh by the way we have modern warfare 2 remastered done also and since everyone's at home playing video games let's just drop this out too i think they've had that <laughs> game done for a very long time when we were doing news stuff on our channel we had covered like modern warfare 2 remastered rumors back in like 2017 and uh and i'm like they probably had it done since then and they were just waiting like till they thought they needed to release it and they uh they probably made a bunch of money when they released it yeah, because Modern Warfare 2, in my opinion, is one of the biggest Call of Duties ever. Oh, yeah. And there's sure. so much nostalgia yeah. there. So I just, I mean, they didn't remaster the multiplayer, so I guess that tanked it a little bit. They might have. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess maybe they're still sitting on it, you know. Um, they're just waiting for a bad game, and they're like, okay, let's just release a different multiplayer so people play that. When, I mean, they might be sitting on a Plague Ops 1 remaster, and we'll get that with Cold War once the player numbers die, or I don't know. Dude, yeah. I would gladly mm -hmm. take a Black Ops 1 remaster because, in my opinion, that's one of the best Call of Duty Zombies you can get for any of the franchise. We'll sell them all separately, too. The campaign, the multiplayer, just yeah. the zombies. So it's, it's <laughs> whatever they each of them. That's like my, my tinfoil hat wear in Conspiracy Theories again. That Activision is sitting on all these games just waiting for when they uh they need like a, to inflate their sales before like a shareholders meeting or something. And then in like a decade from now, Microsoft will drop MCC Remastered. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> as long as the launch is better than the last one. I could see them redoing all of the cutscenes in Blur with with Blur and uh, just remastering all I think they eventually that. should, just so all the games line up. Uh, and I mean, we've done a little controversial video recently where we talked about <laughs> remaking Halo CE, like in a new engine, where the physics aren't like completely messed up. Um, and there were some people saying, no, the game doesn't feel clunky and stuff. And I'm, I mean, it does. I don't like, know. are we playing the same game? Yeah. What are you playing? But, uh, um, no, yeah. I mean, the video was odd, oddly to say, or like, uh, controversial I mean, in that regard. But like, it was, I mean, I think just people who read the title maybe were more outraged than the people who watched the video. Cause I think like, I wasn't saying they need to take out the original halo game in the anniversary edition i'm just saying I'd, it'd be really cool to see the original experience retold in a, in a remake like uh like the resident evil style games oh yeah um, okay with like a like a more updated engine and you can experience it that way instead yeah. of trying to drive a warthog resident evil running 2 over is one of the cool. best actual remakes in the gaming industry we've ever seen i think that's like the peak of remakes 
And I think every remake should be like a Resident Evil 2 remake. Yeah. So if we want to just kind of end the EA conversation. Yeah, I guess we got kind of <laughs> off topic for a while. <laughs> no, that's all, it's good. It's good. Um, we just don't like EA, I guess. It, like, it, it was a good conversation. Like anything but EA. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The only franchises that I would be super excited to see from EA would be if they could somehow revive Knights of the Republic. That would be something I'd want to see. Some new Mass Effect games. Because actually Microsoft, EA, and um, BioWare all combined together to make the original Mass Effect. That was how it got produced. Um, I, I don't know. I think those two franchises alone is enough for me to say I'd like to see it. But I can understand from a business perspective why that would probably never happen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can see that. I, guess, I think they should just uh, get the property. They should just yeah, crack a deal with EA. Be like, yo, let's do Mass Effect. <laughs> but together. <laughs> yes. And I mean, EA does have like quite a few franchises that I enjoy. Um, whether it be Titanfall or even Apex Legends was fun for a while. Um, and like, you know, all the Star Wars stuff or some of the Star Wars games they've done um were really fun but i guess the star wars stuff is always you know a licensing thing with disney so mm-hmm. i guess there's always a third party involved battlefield there. back in the day was pretty popular too oh, oh yeah, yeah battlefield. and i mean i didn't think the last battlefield was bad um i guess it just came out on unlucky time uh they uh i don't know put a battle royale into it that nobody really wanted um and they yeah. put it out late like they put they, out they shouldn't late. have announced that it's coming like yeah way down the game's line yeah yeah, and uh, but I mean the gameplay itself was fun, but like I guess I think we'll see either a bad company three or a bad company remastered uh, next for the Battlefield franchise. I would love um, to see that. I, I thought Bad Company was a great game. Yeah, I think the Bad Company games were peak uh, Battlefield, uh, with Battlefield three. Um, but yeah. All right. So I think I think in uh, terms of purchasing EA. The answer for us is all we don't think it's a good idea, but some franchises would be cool to see Microsoft add a license or acquire off of EA. Yes. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, if you guys have a different opinion than we do, leave that in the comments section below. And remember to go subscribe to Rocket Sloth if you haven't already. Um, As always, I'm Chris. I'm Elijah. I'm Luke. And we will see you on the next Krillcast. Bye, guys.